So now what I'd like to do is go ahead and make a case for this uh, finished radio. Now, in order to do that, uh, I've, I've actually been real lucky in that I do have another radio here that is identical. I did measure from the front to the back to make sure that this would actually fit this case, and it will. It would fit it perfectly. So, with that being said, what I want to do is go ahead and make a case that's identical to this one. Now, this one has the advantage of, it's got a little hinge top here. I've got a, a bar across here that I can screw into. I've got the two sides to screw into, and then, you know, it's just a very basic case. Now, the problem that I ran into was the thickness of the wood. This wood is 5 16 inch thick and trying to find hardwood that's 5 16 thick is extremely difficult right now. I checked my stock, can't find anything. Checked online, can't find anything. So what I've done is I've taken this radio case here. Now this is this case here was off a of TRF uh, home built that I bought and uh, unfortunately when it arrived it was completely trashed. It's got some issues. Uh, one of the biggest ones is the thickness of the wood. This one, I'm sorry, this wasn't, wasn't 5 16 yeah it was 5 16 this one's 7 16 uh, th This is slightly thicker. So I had to compensate for that when I did the layout of this. So I went ahead and I sketched it out. And when I sketched it out, I took into consideration the thickness. And the thickness brings the side measurements and the back measurements down a little bit. So, with that being said, what I did was created little templates. Here, here, at my sides. And my base is going to be under there in the back. So, all these are accurate. And now, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and disassemble this and see if I can't lay out all this with the amount of wood I have here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling this. Uh, I've got some little strips here. Now I am going to actually be able to use these hinges because I do need a couple of hinges. That'll work. So I've got that piece of wood here. Okay, that's good for my base. I can probably, yes, I can get a side on this piece of wood. I can do the back there, and also a side. All right, this is definitely doable. So now, all I need to do is cut out my pieces and uh, go ahead and sand all this down and put it all together.
So I discovered something kind of interesting. This wood has a couple of different finishes on it. And I was able to remove a lot of it with acetone. But something else was remaining and discovered it was lacquer. So it's a, it's a combination of lacquer and some other kind of finish on here. So this has been kind of a pain in the butt. This is some acetone. This removes the most of it. But then I've got all this spotty stuff here, and that appears to be lacquer, which I can get rid of with lacquer thinner. With these old radios, you got to watch for that, because uh, that is one of the things that over a hundred years, a lot of people tend to do some things to refinish or they think it makes it look better. Now back in the 1920s they typically used shellac. Shellac was the major uh, finish for at the beginning and then it then it moved up to uh, uh, lacquer. The way you can figure that out is if you put a little drop of alcohol on it if the finish tends to uh, break down then you've got shellac. If uh, you put lacquer thinner on it and it breaks down, then you've got lacquer. All the sanding, stripping has all been done. Uh, everything's cut, ready to go. What I've got here are my two sides, my back, my base, top door, and the very front of the top. So what's going to happen is I'm going to assemble, go ahead and get started on assembling this. The two sides go like that onto the back now I did go ahead and pre-drill some holes in the sides there so uh, when I go to nail this it will be a lot easier So here I'm just tapping the uh, finishing head nails into the wood below the surface so that I can fill it with putty later. Now we're going to take care of the top. And what I need to do is I need to put a hinge over here. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this to this so I can get my inch spacing correct. Alright, so I've got that clamp down. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to measure one and a half inches in from the edge. Okay, so, so what I need to do now is chisel out these areas here. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and do that three more times. 
So I have these things carved out. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and get these hinges. Should be able to. Mark the holes here so I can drill some pilot holes. The screws. <sighs> when I did this, I discovered that I should have had a little bit of space between the door and the top. I did have to redo it uh, after the fact because when I went to close the door, it actually wouldn't close all the way because uh, there was a little bit of a gap right. between the front and the box. So my next step here is going to be taking the back and size and mounting it on the base. Now uh, one thing I did do is I went ahead and pre-drilled three holes here, here, and here and they're going to line up now here I'm using a countersink bit so that the uh, beveled screw can uh, fit in below the surface I'm using a drill bit there to uh, hold everything in place until I get the screws in. need to drill holes in the panel. Just going deep enough to get through the panel. I don't want to go into the wood. And on the wood, I'm using a, a much smaller bit. Again, using a countersink to uh, allow the screw to go in deeper. Okay. That is it. I've got some uh, sandalwood wood filler right here. Now most of this is going to get sanded off when I actually do the sanding. It's just uh, just trying to fill every little hole that I can find.
Now I'm using a red mahogany stain here, which is uh, the uh, type of stain that was used on the other box. Now I let the stain dry for several days before I'm uh, applying the first coat of shellac. The first coat acts as a sealant. So now I'm just putting the feet on the bottom. I only need to do the uh, sealant coat on the bottom. I'm not too concerned about uh, getting a real good finish on that part of the box. Here I'm putting, uh, I put two or three coats of uh, uh, shellac on it. And now I'm going into the French polishing. French polishing is a method using mineral oil and uh, shellac and a special pad to, uh, to get that nice shiny finish. And uh, here I've got a little bit of uh, sanding to do. Uh, there's, there was some uh, shellac that was kind of uh, showing a run, so uh, it's real easy to just sand it and just put another coat on it. Uh, it's all very simple. That's one of the reasons why I like using shellac. It's very easy to work with. We'll get rid of the mineral oil that I used when doing the French polishing. But it won't harm the uh, shellac. Okay, now I'm going to apply a couple of coats of uh, Johnson's Paste Wax. Uh, I kind of like using it. Uh, it does need to be reapplied from time to time. Uh, you can't just let it sit forever. But uh, it's, it's, it puts a nice finish on it. And it does protect things. Now, I always let that final uh, wax coat sit for at least 24 hours and then I hit it again uh, with a micro cloth and that brings out the final shine. I've tried not to be too critical of the, the case here. There's lots of flaws. Uh, just like if somebody had built this case from scratch, that's what there'd be. Um, I want it to look as though it's original to the radio. We're going to go ahead and uh, put the radio in here. That's it. So now you can see all the irregularities in the case which gives it its character and it uh, makes it look accurate for the time. Now typically the inside of the case is not finished, uh, however I, I do think it adds a little bit of character to this, so I went ahead and did that. But I didn't put a lot of effort into it, just, uh, just got a little coat on there and I think it looks pretty good. 
Now as I promised, uh, we're going to go ahead and hook this to an amplifier and see how it sounds. So this is a very low wattage transmitter I have in the house that's uh, producing that music. Uh, the rest of it's uh, regular radio stations. Okay, we got a station there. So, as you can see, there's several stations, all relatively <laughs> hard to tune in, but, uh, hey, that's a regenerative receiver, this is how it works, and this is kind of uh, issues that you will have with them. Well, this concludes part three of this series. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I must say that the Lloyd C. Green Concert Receiver definitely exceeded my expectations and I really liked the way it came together as well. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this please hit subscribe. In the meantime happy restorations everyone. Hope to see you next video. Goodbye.